Well, hello friends. Welcome back to Browser Hacking. Um, today we are going to continue with one of Oliver's demos. Um, and we're going to try his Mandelbrot implementation instead, which looks like this. So it's supposed to draw a Mandelbrot fractal. And I'm picking this because somebody pointed out on Twitter that uh, I should probably have started with this because it would be a, a lot easier or a lot simpler. And um, I'm a little bit burned out from yesterday, so having something a bit easier seems uh, very palatable right now. So if we look at the code here, it's very small setup code that calls draw Mandelbrot. And draw Mandelbrot is this function here. Um, looks very, very simple. So maybe we can get this going pretty easily. Let's find out. Uh, so let's make a local copy of it. Uh, call it MB maybe. And we also need that JavaScript here. So da, 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 da. okay. And let's just verify that it works in Firefox. Clickety. Yes, it does. Uh, and I think right away we are going to scale things down a little bit because this thing is pretty gigantic. And I'm thinking 100 by 100 is plenty for our uh, little implementation. Oh, I guess it's not that easy. Oh, wait, no, no, we can tweak it here. Canvas width. And this height. And yeah, it's it's a bit hard to see, but it, it, it is in there. So I uh, wonder if this makes any difference. Not too much. Anyway, let's see if we can run this thing in our browser and see how that works. Oh, and we should probably actually set up the browser to open this automatically. So instead of RayJS, we'll open Mandel Brot. Whew. So yeah, like I was saying, I'm pretty tired from yesterday. Um, four hours in a row was a little bit, a little bit much, and uh, taking it a little bit easier today. So hey. Anyway. That's a text box. Oh, it's supposed to be a checkbox. <laughs> um, anyway, that doesn't matter now. So are we running the script? It seems like we're not. Did we get an error message through a JavaScript error? Reference error. Canvas not known. All right, so we can uh, debug that. Canvas. Um, canvas. Where is that coming from? Are we in Mandelbrot.js, I wonder? Yeah, so it's the same thing again with the captures. And I'm not going to do the captures today either. So we'll just make a global called canvas. No. Uh, let's see that it still works. Clickety clack. That does not still work. Okay. That's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess we're going to need some kind of um, activation object for captures to work correctly. But for now, we're just going to hack it by putting captures in globals. So let's try this again. Again, cam is not known. Mm, okay. Where is that from then? C 
set timeout. Do we have more than those? No. Force slow path. Um, false. Do we have a whole bunch of more things down here that we need to take care of? No. Where's this canvas not error coming from? The canvas is wait. Why does it tolerate this here? There's no such thing as canvas. So why does Firefox allow me to do this? What the heck? How does it know what I mean? I guess is my question. <laughs> No such thing as A. So somebody sets canvas to that. Um, but who sets it? Canvas. Okay. Well, this is a bit confusing to me, but I don't, I don't get it. Why do we? All right, I don't understand why we can see it under that name, but I will just make something like this. Canvas element is document get element by id canvas. Oh shit! Wait, wait, wait. Is this that if you have something with an ID, you can access it like that? So if we set, if we make um, this anchor here, we give it an ID, hello, does that mean that this will be called hello in the window object? Hello. Look at that. Um, that's why it works because it's a, it shows up like a window object property based on the ID. So it's not in the document, it's on window. Hmm, that's really wacky. So we don't have a good mechanism to support that right now, but also, since this was just a stupid accident that I caused, I'm just going to ignore this for the moment. And uh, we'll go back to just um, grabbing the element manually. So we'll do that. See that it still works. Yes. Okay. Well, that was very confusing, but we learned that um, elements need to be exposed by ID on the window object. I guess I'm not super thrilled about having to support that because it's kind of weird, but uh, all right. So now we need size. It's also missing. Um, probably another capture thing. Yeah, 
it's right down there. All right, well, let's we'll just hack it. Run. Still the same problem. Oh, because I'm I didn't change it to say size or XX size. working around a lot of things here, so it's almost feeling a little bit like cheating. Uh, size not known still. Still? Why not? Size, 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 size. Size not known. Why? We don't have size in this file, so it's only in this file. And actually, it comes to us here, but where are we supposed to be getting it from? Oh, oh, I see it. It's this guy right here, and we're not hoisting. Okay, this we can probably implement. So var declarations are supposed to be hoisted uh, to the top, but I have to look up how that works. Um, bum, 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 hoist. So even if a var is declared down here, it should still be visible up here. Although it shouldn't be initialized with this value until we're up here, I think. Declaring it anywhere is equivalent to declaring it at the top. Um, blah equals to var blah is implicitly understood as var blah blah two. Right. And hoisting affects the variable declaration, but not the value initialization. So it seems like scale ratio is not going to be computed correctly here because it will be scale divided by undefined. Is that used for anything? It's not used for anything. So technically we could skip over it and let's just skip over it and see if, see what comes next, if there's more hoisting problems. Uh, undefined is not a function. Probably that's math min. Um, we can implement that. Math object. So we added max yesterday. Now we're adding min. And uh, let's see, what is math min of infinity of nothing of nan hmm so min with no arguments is positive infinity so that's okay i keep asking people to stop putting else after return, because this sort of thing looks so weird once you realize that you don't need else after return, because then you can just get rid of those, uh, and it just cleans up the code so much. Um, so we'll just put this the other way around and declare him alongside Max. And 
and then we'll take it for a spin. Well, see, it's churning and burning. It was doing something, a lot of it. Um, about hoisting, I think we can achieve hoisting by uh, when we enter into a new scope, we just um, traverse the whole scope all the children of the scope looking for a VAR declaration. Go for VAR declarations. Uh, and I guess let and const as well. So... Before any code is executed. What do they mean top? The top of what though? Top of function. Okay. So either top of function or top of global code. So I was thinking it should be at the top of the block, but it should be at the top of the function. So when we enter into a function, we have to um, traverse the entire um, AST of that function and find, um, find all the declarations and pre-declare all of those things as undefined. I think we can do that. And it ran. 86 seconds and produced nothing okay well <laughs> it ran to completion uh, let's see maybe we can um, let's test out that we did the min thing correctly first of all so math min one Actually, let's do with the new syntax highlighter here. See if that actually works. Three comma two two. Um, this seems to work. I would say. Clickety. Pretty cool. Okay, so I think that's all right. Let's add a test for that. Live.js tests, copy, math, max, math min. And we'll just copy these guys, but change some things around so that it makes sense. And um, MathMin did not work, but it's because our Linux version of libjs is not updated. So um, let's just make a rebuild of that. Now we have two failures. Great. Oh, OK. But these are because of debug logging. So throw exception. I need to fix this, but it's a separate issue. You get some false positives unless you turn off this debug logging on Linux. So we're good. That's great. Get mm, add admin. Uh, leap JS and math min. All right, and then I wonder why it's so slow. Probably we can make it go way faster by just making it smaller. So let's just try that for starters, because waiting for 86 seconds is a bit much. Um, we had the width. So what if we go 30 by 30? Can see the CPU churn for six seconds and then we got nothing. Okay, so six seconds, that's more doable. 
So how does it expect to draw? Is there a fill rack somewhere? Yes, there is. So... We don't have put image data. So this branch here will not be taken. And it's not for slow path and we don't have set fill color. So this path will not be taken. So we'll take this path right here. Um, so I'm expecting this fill style and this fill rect to be called. But we can always we can always log something. Um, X comma Y. Let's call for the color. This is not logging anything. So maybe we're not here. Um, let's see, where are we? Set, we are, here's the set timeout function. So let's log something in here. Um, console log uh, thing. I just want to see if we're running at all. This kind of editing we could do inside of the system, by the way. Okay, so why don't we log anything here? Wait a minute, it's calling set timeout with no uh, argument. What does that mean? And how does it even know that it's time to finish? Okay. Is that timeout with no argument? Does that mean there's a zero timer? So it's supposed to be called right away? Or, um... <sighs> we gotta figure this out. Arguments. Delay is optional. If it's omitted, a value of zero is used, meaning execute immediately on the next event cycle. So we can do that. And oh, we don't support this either. Um, okay, so set timeout. Um, which will be called from here. But if, are you, oh, so we're ignoring this because we don't have enough arguments. We should really say that. And we'll say interval. Okay. Um, and then the interval is um, if interpreter argument count is greater than or equal to two, then here's our interval. Otherwise, we'll use zero. Anything is different, but force slow path not known. Where are you looking at that? Force slow path. Oh, yeah, we should have xxed it, of course. Wait, does that mean that none of this was running before? Oh, wait, I guess it's just running this big loop here. Like computing whatever this is, the, the fractal, I guess. Um, 
So that takes maybe six seconds, and then after that it wants to render. And okay, so result is not known. More hacks. Can we just do that? Okay, so I guess this is the part where we're spending all the time. So we're iterating. Okay, so now we didn't get any errors. And I kind of feel like I see uh, something in there. <laughs> it's so small. Uh, let's get a screenshot. This is a bit uh, weird, but we're going to have to use some image viewer with zoom. See? It's that Mandelbrot fractal. Oh, dude, this is so annoying that it. Um, anti alias is when I hold it still. So I have to keep moving a little bit, and then you can see the pixels. But if I let it be still and it's smooth, just because I'm zoomed, it's a stupid feature. Can you turn that off, maybe? Turn off smoothing. Why would you want this? So much better. Mm. Okay, so... Um, that's great. So that's our Mandelbrot fractal right there. Um, so we had to make the set timeout API on the window object accept um, no interval parameter, which we'll treat as zero interval. Good well, allow a window set timeout with no interval. Uh, absence. If no interval is specified, it will be treated as zero, and the timer and the callback function will be called on the next event. Loop iteration. That's cool. So. Why was that so slow then? Like now I'm kind of curious. What were we doing in that loop anyway? Um, it's a lot of just very basic math, I guess. Some basic loops. Some mathing. Let's. Um, why don't we get a profile of it? See what's going on. So. Uh, let's see, so we'll start a profile. Profile, uh, PID21 enable. Okay, and then we will disable it and we'll see what it was doing there. It's taking a while to load. Okay, so this is our profile. We are in click, clicking on a JavaScript URL as expected, and then it goes deep into something. So this kind of profile, I like to just turn upside down to see what's the innermost frame. And we can see here that malloc and free are totally dominating uh, what we're doing here. So this might be something really easy to make better, actually. So free, we are in, um, st in string comparison. Uh, this should be very avoidable. So we are doing variable lookup in the for statement. So for statement, variable declaration, binary expression, blah, blah, blah. I guess we're assigning to a new variable 
and then we're looking up the variable by name in the interpreter's variable scope. So get variable is doing a fly string comparison to a const char star get variable. So it's the scope variables get this guy right here. Um, so fly string has operator equal uh, const char star, but I feel like this one is like hilariously unoptimized. Where are you? Right here. Yeah. So it's creating creating a new string every time that we compare it against a const char star. We can do better. So um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. If maybe we can even take this from string actually operator. Yeah, we have it right here. Fly string. That's basically it. That should um, calm down the thing that we appear to be doing the most of. Let's see if we can make this go a little faster in two seconds. Variable lookup is very, very heavy in LibJS at the moment. This here is just um, like the most noticeable pathology, but like even if we make this one go away, it's it's all like very unoptimized and it's not uh, the data structures that we have for keeping track of variables, they're not optimized. Like um, we're just putting everything in hash maps. And uh, when we want to make this go faster eventually, now we're just doing a little bit for fun, but eventually we, when we want to make this thing go faster, we're going to need to switch over to uh, something more like registers. So look at that, we're down from six something to two uh, something. That's a huge improvement. And maybe we can still get a profile. So F grep browser um, profile E P I'm still forgetting the syntax for this dash E is enable. So reload, enable profiler, start. Then we can just let it finish. Stop the profiler, open the profile. All right, let's flip that guy upside down. As you can see here, uh, get variable is still the heaviest, but at least now malloc and free is not dominating inside. So malloc is still very heavy though. Malloc and free are both on here. And the assignment is expression. What's that about? Assignment expression. Assignment, execute. Oh, look at that. It's, we're creating a function object here. I think it's mallocking of that function is the heaviest thing in the whole profile. <laughs> That's well outside of get um, variable, but if you combine malloc and free together, like these two guys together, they have more samples in them than get variable. Um, so we can probably get rid of that as well. Let's see. So, ack, uh, make fly string a little less 
hilariously unoptimized. Um, and then this guy right here, because function objects are heap allocated, so commit is um, we have a different commit function depending on if you're using uh, an identifier or a member expression here. All right. So basically what this means is that um, we have two ways of handling this type of expression. So uh, if you do assignment expression is like O uh, equal one. Uh, this is the identifier case. So the left hand side is an identifier. We have a plain variable name here. And if the left hand side is a member expression, it will be something like O dot F is one. So we have to do something slightly differently in those cases because this is a variable assignment. So it goes to variable assignment path. And this here is a uh, member member assignment. So we have to actually do a put on this object rather than doing a variable assignment. Um, but why did I write it this way? We can also just look at the type of thing at the end. No, like this doesn't have to work this way. I'm not sure what the point is of that function pointer at all. Maybe it made sense in an earlier version, but or we're committing right, right hand side result. Yeah. So this is very strange. And value is right hand side result. This seems just generally more straightforward because then we don't have the actual commit logic upstairs, but after the code has actually executed, so I don't see any problems with this approach. Let's, or we should just do a build of the OS. And see if we can still run all the JavaScript tests, but this seems very sane to me. Okay, why are these so slow? Hmm. Why are we failing some of these? What's up with that? Um, math trunk? Why doesn't that work? JS. That seems fine. See, that's not, that's not minus zero, that's one. Okay. So we had some math failures and math seal is also not working. Anyway, um, I don't think I was breaking these, so we should have tested the browser. 1.5 seconds. And it's so hard to see, but I feel like I'm seeing the fractal in there. Uh, well, it comes out a little better in the dark. So I think, um, let's get a profile again, see what's dominating now, because this is pretty fun. Um, Browser. Mm. 
What is this thing doing? Get variable is now the worst. Yeah. So there are various tricks that we can do, but the best trick to making this faster, I think, is um, going for a bytecode um, interpreter eventually. But I would like to actually flesh out the language so that we have a like a full AST and like a, a good runtime and everything, and then we can start figuring out what kind of bytecode we want. Um, because at least I'm still very much learning the language and figuring out what the needs are and so on. Here we have a vector resize. This looks kind of heavy. Um, I could probably optimize this. An assignment expression. It's assigning an object property and resizing the object underlying object storage. Um, we could do better with that one. See this, this is the guy who was up top early on. Look at him down here. Okay. Mm. Yeah, this is all look up. If we flip it, what do we see? Run JavaScript. Hmm. It's really, um, I don't know, for me, it's really mesmerizing to look at profiles to see how programs run. And, um, the libjs interpreter looks so cool in the profiler because you can like you can actually see the program ast as it executes here um, and you see what stuff takes time but maybe we shouldn't stare at this all day what we got there was a huge improvement already so um, maybe that's okay wonder if the RayJS thing that we worked on yesterday, I guess it probably sped up a bit. Was it taking yesterday 11 seconds? And seven. And um, the <laughs> yesterday the pixels came out all black and I was so close to being able to render yesterday, I just didn't realize um, that the only thing that needed fixing, um, which I didn't fix on video, but the only thing that needed fixing was that it was doing, it was creating the um, color values by doing this, like RGBA um, plus R plus, uh, oh no, 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 not that. It was doing this, RGB, like this. Um, and yeah, of course you have to have some values here, so. I don't know, like that, right? And then it was doing this. And we were not interpolating the array here correctly. So what we ended up with was um, RGB object array. And I just had to implement array prototype to string so that it would create the string and then it worked. So it was like one <laughs> fix away from actually rendering the uh, seen yesterday, <laughs> but it was time to quit. Like I was so hazy and foggy. So anyway, uh, this thing is apparently down from 11 to seven seconds, which is uh, stellar and it's still upside down. So it needs some more work, but it's still cool. Anyway, um, let's see. This fix right here is good. It's very, very good. It's just uh, removing an unnecessary heap allocation, unnecessary malloc of free pair in assignment expression execute. Malloc 
plus uh, three and um, we are constructing creating a temporary hack function for no good reason and this was dominating the profile dominating profiles Um, reorganize the code so it is not needed, necessary. Yeah, that's really cool. So I guess we can we can try a little bit bigger. Uh, we can make the canvas a little bit bigger. <laughs> But honestly, I'm I'm a little bit on the very tired side today, so I think uh, I think we're basically going to be done here. We're just going to test this out with a hundred by a hundred, see how it works. But we got some nice patches in, a bit more relaxing. I guess we can start it, and let me switch themes, dark. So now you can see actually that the browser didn't become dark because he's stuck doing Mandelbrot computations. And I have no idea how long this is going to take. But probably a moment. Hopefully a smaller moment than um, 86 seconds like originally, but I don't know. Anyway, what did we do here? I guess we can look at the, oh, there we go. 35 seconds. And we got clearly a Mandelbrot fractal in here. So outside of the capture problem still remaining, and we didn't do hoisting. Uh, I think I'll skip over it. I'm, I'm, I'm just too, <laughs> too tired. I'm not going to do hoisting today. But we need, to, we need to do hoisting later. And we also need to do activation objects so that you can capture things um, from the surrounding scope. But all in good time. We got some, some decent stuff done here today. Let's see, a little recap what we did. We added math min, uh, window set timeout with no interval, and then we did two little optimizations to make this go a lot faster than it originally did, um, driven by the profiler. So. A little nice mix of things. So um, I guess we'll end it here. So if you made it this far, I thank you for watching, for hanging out. And I hope that some of it was interesting and that uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.